All right, in a day of announcements, we have finally got the announcement, the full undercard for Tyson Fury versus Alexander Usyk. I am still curious before I just talk about the card to see how much TNT are going to charge. It will be a TNT pay-per-view, that of which I've no doubt. I wouldn't imagine the zone. The zone will probably have international rights, but in terms of the UK, I'd imagine it's only going to be on TNT. I'm curious as to see how much they charge pay-per-view. I am. I am. Um, I was pleasantly surprised with the price of the day of reckoning. I was also pleasantly surprised at the price of Fury and Ganu. Will I be ple pleasantly surprised with this, or could it be topping the 30 quid mark? Who knows? In terms of the undercard, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's a pretty damn decent undercard. It's a pretty decent undercard. So, there's a couple of opponents who haven't been announced yet, that's fine. But the names of people who are David Nyeka, D. I think he's New Zealand. Yeah, he's New Zealand. Cruiserweight prospect. We're not going to call him, he's a prospect. I actually was tipping him to do quite well in the Olympics in 2020. Obviously, he didn't. I think yeah, well, he did. He got a bronze medal, to be fair. But I thought he could do a bit better than that. I've seen well at least one of David Nyeka's pro fights. I've seen a few actually. He fought on. I think he fought on the undercard of. Well, he fought on the undercard of Joe Parker versus Junior Fa. He also fought on the undercard of Joe Parker versus Chisora too, in the UK. He's about six foot five. He's tall. He's decent. I think David Nyeka has a good bit of potential there. So I'm interested to see how he looks. Back of dear Jalalov. Need I say more? Tremendous puncher. I think he is going to be a major problem for a lot of heavyweights in the heavyweight division. You know, I talk about the likes of Fury, Usek, Joshua. We'll see what happens with Dylan White. But the likes of them, even maybe put the Andrew Ruiz in as being, a, I don't want to say like the old guard in terms of they're over the hill. But they are, they're not over the hill. But they've been around. They're not getting any younger. And some would argue it could be in the twilight. Whereas people, it's crazy because it seems like only yesterday we were watching Fury versus Klitschko. We were watching Joshua versus Klitschko. And at that point, they were sort of the, the you know, it was the path under the torch. Now we're kind of into that territory now. And I think Bakadir Jalalov is going to be one of the major players in the heavyweight division in the next 18 months. Tremendous puncher. And we talk about a major player in the heavyweight division... Moses the Telma, man who's been sparring Tyson Fury in preparation for this fight. He's not got an opponent announced yet, uh, but there is talk. Well, we know that the British Boxing Board of Control have ordered it, a purse between him and Solomon Dacus. Now, I believe a Telma beats him pretty easily, because Dacus haven't been impressed with him when he was with Matchroom. His last fight, I really wasn't impressed. You could argue he lost that fight. With a Telma, he's trying to break Mike Tyson's record, and... I was only thinking to myself, and again, this is just, I'm just thinking here. With Fury Usyk, if Fury wins, let's say he wins, and I know there's talk that the winner, now, they were saying that the winner of uh, Fury versus Usyk and the winner of Joshua versus Ngannou will fight one another. I don't know how the rematches work, because Fury Usyk, I mean, I'm sure step aside money will be paid, but... Fury has said in a few interviews that he's going to vacate the titles if he wins. All right, except it'll be BBC. Now, if he does do that, that would mean that obviously the winner of Parker Zang gets elevated. Jo uh, jo uh, Joshua can fight Hergovic for the vacant IBF. But the WBA isn't Manuel Char the regular champion? And wouldn't they, uh, amazing, wouldn't they? Wouldn't they elevate him to full champion? Honestly, Char is has been over the hill for years and even then he wasn't that good could a Telma actually fight him and then break Tyson's record I mean I'm only just thinking about that that's just a little bit of kind of thoughts of if Fury did do that but potentially he could you never know stranger things have happened so he's on the card Isaac Low IQ is on the card as well he is fighting a guy Hasabula Ahmedi I think is how you say that guy's name I think he's 20 something and one and he's uh, quite young so it's going to be interesting to see I mean Low. He's lost to Nicky Ball. He lost to uh, Luis Alberto Lopez. I think he lost both those fights by stoppage. So let's see what happens there. Should be an intriguing fight. Bit of a random one. Sergei Kovalev versus Robin Schwarzan. Or Susan. I think is how you say that guy's name. Let's have a look see at his box rec actually. Because I haven't actually... I think he's unbeaten. And I think he's a cruiserweight if I'm not mistaken. So let's have an old... Uh, Let's have a look-see at this guy's box wreck. So, 
16 and 0 with 12 knockouts 31 years old based in the states based in las vegas nevada but originally from sweden who's on his resume uh dishon webster that name rings a bell but i'm not sure why it rings a bell who has he been in there with Terrell Pulev, maybe that's the fight. Lost that fight on points. 12 rounds. Jeez, so you can go the distance. Samuel Clarkson. Who else? Steve Nelson. Not really any spectacular names on his resume. In terms of who this guy is, Denis Grachev. That name rings a bell, all right. Who else is there? Yeah, so there's not really anybody on this guy's resume. So you would imagine Kovalev is going to be the best. Sergei Kovalev. We all know with Sergei Kovalev. Tremendous light heavyweight in his prime. One of my favorite fighters in his prime. But over the last few years, he's been using his jab a lot more. He's not looked quite the same since those Andre Ward uh, losses. He's been, obviously, he was stopped and knocked out by later Alvarez. Won the rematch. Really went life and debt with Anthony Yard. Then was knocked out badly by Canelo. Hasn't lost since then, but I think he's only had one or two fights. I don't think he had the Terrell Pulev fight, but I don't think he's fought since then. So that's on the undercard. Bit of a random one, but A.O. Joe Cordina versus Anthony Kakache, good fight, very good fight, world title fight as well. Jaya Pattaya versus Myris Bredis too. I mean, this card for me, I think it's slightly better. I think it is slightly better than the Joshua Ngannou card, which is also a very good card. But this has three world title fights. And each one of these could have headlined, well, each one of the two co-mains could have headlined their own show. I mean, Joe Cordina's headlined a couple of matchroom shows against Kikache. It's a really, really good fight. And Jay Apataya Briadis too. That's a tremendous fight. Uh, will be for the vacant IBF title. It really just, again, I, I just... He, Jay Apataya has already beaten Briadis once. Briadis hasn't done anything since that loss. And Jay Apataya vacated his title, which is now more than likely, I'll be picking him, going to win back. I, I think the IBF should have just let him have that fight against Elizaro. And then we could have had this. We're going, well, we would have got this fight anyway. So, look, it is what it is. But Jay Apataya Briadis too. I love that fight. It's a great co-main event, truth be told. The first fight was very good. I think Jay Apataya is even better now than he was then. It's only a year and a bit ago. But I think Jay Apataya is fantastic. And I'll be picking him over Myris Briadis. I will. I know he's only... You could say, yeah, he's had two runouts where Briadis has had none. But two runouts have really been you know what no disrespect to jordan thompson and elizara but they haven't been even they shouldn't have been in the ring they really shouldn't but it's still it's it's activity for jay apataya briadis is getting up there in age he's got to be pushing 40 now and he's been out of the ring for well over a year i'll be fancying jay apataya in this fight i will and obviously headlined is the main event tyson fury alexander rusek we're all looking forward to that fight the build-up is... Start, we're nearly a month away, so we really are going to get into the build-up now. We're going to be doing videos, little previews, and stuff like that. We're all looking forward to Fury Usyk. That's a very good card. You know, I love... We've been teased a little bit with the Saudi the last two cards because they've been all heavyweights. So I was thinking it'd be primarily heavyweights. I was thinking, will we get Bacoli? Will we get Hergovic? We're not seeing them on either of the cards. That doesn't mean we won't see them on future cards. I love heavyweights and you know when you, you, you think like oh how many heavyweight fights are we going to get we're getting the big heavyweight fight there with Fury Usyk um, that's pretty much it like we are getting some other heavyweights on it but not you know kind of 50-50 fights but nevertheless it's still a very very good card as is the Joshua Ngannou card a very very good card so um, look I'm happy that's within three weeks of one another so Fury versus Usyk that card a great card and three weeks later we're into Joshua Ngannou another very very good card so Boxing in 2024 is... We're looking good, lads. I'm not going to lie. We're looking good. We've obviously got that Sky show this week, which I'm not madly keen on. Like, I'll watch it, but I'm, I'm not really as hyped for it as I am with other cards. We have that uh, Queensbury show coming up in early February. Uh, Liam Williams versus Hamza Shearer. Looking forward to that. That looks like a really, really good undercard. Some really nice fights on it. Then the, the following week, we're into this fight. Three weeks later, we're into Joshua versus Nganu. And I think then March the 16th, there's some good fights. So 2024, lads, it's shaping up to be a flipping good year. It's shaping up to be a very, very good year. We've already seen O'Hara Davis, Barroso, and Virgil Ortiz. We already saw that fight in the weekend against uh, Callum Smith and Baturbia, which I thought was an excellent fight for how long it lasted. I think this year so far, we're off to a good start. We're off to a really, really good start. And um, listen, if this is just the, if this is only the beginning, of how good it's going to be this year 2024 
it's shaping up to be a hell of a year. I, I'm looking forward to seeing what else is going to happen this year. You know, it's not even just, you know, I like the way they talked about it at the press conference. I'm going a bit on, I know, but they talked about the press conference. It's not just about having big main events. It's about having big undercards. That's music to my ears because it's it's happened to them all. Queensbury, Shalom, uh, Matt Drew and Hearn, they've all been victim of it. They've all been guilty of it. They've all done, yeah, Good main events, but weak pay-per-view undercurrents. Certainly for pay-per-view. And I'm liking that with what the Saudis are doing. They're getting away from that. You know, at the end of the day, Jarrell Miller, Daniel Dubois, a fight that if it was on in the UK, on Queensbury, it would be a main event in the OVO, possibly the O2. No one would bat, and everyone would be like, yep, that's a main event fight. That's a main event level fight. It's not even, it's fourth from main event. It's not even co-main on these cars. That's crazy. Anthony Kakache versus um, or Joe Cordina. That's probably going to be third from top. A world top. We're going to have three worlds. It's crazy how good these cards are. Look, I'm not complaining. None of us are complaining. It's really good. I'm happy about that. So, yeah, Fury Usek undercard. Really, really happy. Looks very good. Yeah, long may it continue long may it last hopefully this is the start the beginning hopefully this also can come in more so to uk boxing because obviously these fights are happening in saudi when we have these uk shows and we have these uk pay-per-view shows with the likes of her with the likes of warren hopefully then they will you know take note and be like okay we, we can work with one another you know we can do this we can do this we can have these bigger undercards even in the standard uk shows you know, look at that card Warren did before Christmas, that uh, November card. What was it called again? The Magnificent Seven. Magnificent is the only word I can use. It was brilliant. You know, we're seeing this now. Hopefully it continues. Long may it last. That's all I can say. Long may it last. I'll leave it there. Hope you enjoyed it, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe, of course. As always, if you haven't already, let's get to 20K. If, if we don't do 20K this year, with all the boxing that we have to look forward to, we're doing something wrong. That's what I got to say. Peace.